Bless the Lord, Rel Church fam. We are glad that you are with us this morning. Listen, God is doing great things in our life, and we're excited about what God is about to do in your life. We're getting ready to go into the message in a little bit, but we want to take the time to celebrate some folks because you matter. You're, the way that you do life matters. The way that you decide to worship with us, it matters. The way that you pour into the ministry, the way that you send messages and to encourage us and, and share online, this stuff matters. I want you to understand that. And so we got some family that has came into the building now they're located somewhere different we got folks who are in baltimore we got folks who are in texas we got people who watch in california we got people who watch uh, in pittsburgh people who are over in korea people who are all around watching and i'm not talking about just people who watch like oh they're figurative whatever but no like people who have actually been in this sanctuary and have traveled and god has moved them to different places but they still connect to the ministry and i think that's amazing and i I think it's important to understand that you still connect it, that you are not just out there in cyberspace, that we see you, that we love you, that you are connected with us. And so we want to shout out some folks. We want to shout out Val Thomas, Miss Val. We love you and we send love your way. We are thankful for you and how you come on and how you comment and how you help us and, and how you love on us and how we get to see you sometimes in person. And we it was just we wanted to, to take the time to acknowledge the fact that your presence online, it, it it means something to us. We lift up Nikki Tucker. We celebrate her now. God, that she she hops in every now and then and that she shares and she comments and she sends love. And we're excited to have you with us as we watch online. Patricia, Patricia Jarvis, man, <laughs> Miss Pat, we love you and the love that you shared. And when we get to sit down and talk and we begin to share with each other and the stories that you share with us and, and all that kind of stuff, we're excited and we're able to do that. And Miss Patty Condry that I got to meet and came up and, and we talked last week and I'm excited about what God is doing in her life and how he continues to use people to bless us even though it's a young relationship that we have just now started to build even more and so I'm excited to have you watching with us McCurry family McCurry family in the house that's how they come on online and we're excited to have you worshiping with us always and when we get to see you and get to hug your neck it's always a bonus but we appreciate you coming in and watching online with us consistently and we send and love to your family and send love to the children and all of them. And so we're excited for what God is doing. Our family of Rel Church, and I like to call it a community because the community, the church, we are connected, we're the body, and it looks so different. It looks like heaven to me. It looks like older folks. It looks like younger folks. It looks like babies. It looks like black people. It looks like white people. It looks like Asian people, Hispanic people. It looks like people who have abundance of money. It looks like people who are on their journey to financial security. It looks like those who, who are from the local area, people who are from further away. It looks like all these different things and everybody loves each other and appreciates each other and is beautiful. And so I just want to let you know that the ability and the opportunity to be able to worship with you online, in person, however we do it, I'm thankful, I love you, and I hope that you continue to worship with us and continue to lift up the name of Jesus everywhere that you go. God is using you to encourage us and we pray that we are encouraging you. And as we go forward, we're going to see God's kingdom continue to build up, 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 and up. We're getting ready to go into the message. Make sure that you stay until the end. Something special that happens when you stay from the beginning to the end. Make sure that you create a space to where you can hear God in, that you get something set up that you can honor him with, even if it's in your car or whatever, that you just focus in, that you got a space that you can focus and hear him. Make sure that you share this message with somebody because I believe that God connects us to things that we can share with our neighbor and then also save this message so that you can go back and revisit it. So we're excited for what we're about to go into. Matter of fact, I'm gonna pray with you before we go into the word. Father, I ask and I bless your name for all those who are watching in this moment, God, that you've called into this live stream. God, I thank you that we're speaking peace into their family. We're speaking health into their life. God, we speak wisdom into their life now. Understanding, God. I even thank you that you're, you're mending broken relationships within the family now in the name of Jesus and that you're drawing them closer together, that they may walk in the fullness of God that you have placed on their life now in the name of Jesus. I thank you, God, that those who they've been praying for healing for are going to walk in that healing now. Those who that they've been praying that they would come to the knowledge of Christ. God, we ask that they would actually come to the knowledge of Christ. And God, I thank you 
that you are leading and guiding us right to where you want us to be. So we speak blessing, favor, peace, wisdom, prosperity, all these different things over their life that your perfect will in their life will be done. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. We're getting ready to go on the message. Let's go into the word of God. Share this message with somebody. We love you, and we are going to continue to dig deeper into the word of God. Bless the Lord, everybody. On this Sunday morning, we are ready to get in the word of God, and we're going to dig into the word in a very special way. I'm looking forward to what God is about to do in your homes and the space that you're in. I just believe that the Holy Spirit can come in and shift the atmosphere and that we can receive a word today that will allow us to see God, feel God, and know God on a whole new level because of what God does through his word. And so we're going to dig in. We're going to Mark chapter two. We're going to look at verses one through five. I'm going to be reading from the new century version, Mark chapter two, verses one through five. It says this, a few days later, When Jesus came back to Capernaum, the news spread that he was home. Verse two, many people gathered together so that there was no room in the house, not even outside the door. And Jesus was teaching them God's message. Four people came carrying a paralyzed man. Verse four, since they could not get to Jesus because of the crowd, they dug a hole in the roof right above where he was speaking. When they got through, they lowered the mat with the paralyzed man on it. Verse five, when Jesus saw the faith of these people, he said to the paralyzed man, young man, your sins are forgiven. If you can pray with me under the topic of ready, set, go. Look at somebody say ready, set, go go. Father, we thank you. and We bless your name for the word of God that we're about to dig into. We ask that you would teach us today in a way that we would understand even more. Lord, that our hearts will be connected with yours, that we will be able to to walk out this thing this week in a way that is powerful, impactful, and that it will resonate in our hearts beyond this message. Lord, allow us to hear you today. Allow us to see you today and allow us to be in alignment with your purpose and be able to receive your word in a great way. We thank you for all these things in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. And so we've been at different places in our life where we've seen God do great things. I believe that if you're watching this message, then you have seen God do great things in your life. You have seen God move mountains out your way. You have seen God do do miracles, signs and wonders in your life. You've seen God be faithful time and time again. And though they may not be miracles to other people, but because of where you were in the moment that it happened, it was a miracle to you. And I want you to be comfortable enough to bless God for the miracle that's happening in your life, even though it may not be as large or considered a miracle to somebody else. God is taking you on a journey. God is leading you to a place that he's called you to. God is pushing you forward in a great way. And I need for you to understand that it's okay for your story to be your story. I want you to understand that it's okay for God to do great things in your life the way he wants to do great things in your life, even if other people don't consider them great. When we're able to bless God and be great, grateful for what he's doing in our life, even though it doesn't look like what somebody else's life is doing, then God is able to take you on a journey that's unique to you and you will celebrate him all the way. And when we can lift God high, even when it doesn't look like we should be celebrating these things, I know that God will appreciate that praise and open up more doors for you as we bless him every step of the way. As a church plant, I remember we praised God for a water cooler. I remember that we praised God for chairs. I remember we praised Praise God for new chairs, new to us chairs that were used from someone else. I believe when we bless God for the new chairs that we have today, when we bless God, when we were in just one or one uh, unit here in this building, and we bless God when we were in two, and then we bless God when we were in three, and then we bless God when we were in four, and we bless God as we begin to expand, and we bless God as things begin to come in and technology begin to update, that we bless God, even though the other people, the other churches in our life, the other churches in our circle, the other other churches may have had more than we had. We didn't deem that a reason not to give God praise for what he was doing in our life. And I want you to get to a place where you can bless God
God and lift him up for what he's doing in your life, even if it doesn't look like it compares to what he's doing in somebody else's life. What he's doing in somebody else's life is their business. What he's doing in your life is your business and to give God praise for everything. I don't care if you got to praise him because your kid got a C and you were hoping that he got an A, but he got a C and that C was great for him and you give God a great big praise. I don't care if it's the fact that your husband texted you today and he hadn't texted you all week, but you're going to give God a praise for that answer prayer because we turn in the right direction. I want you to be ready enough to give God a great big praise for what he's doing in your life, even if it doesn't look like it's major to somebody else. If we can bless God in the little, he can show us, we can show him that we appreciate even the little that he can make us rulers over much. And I dare you to show God that you appreciate the little that's happening in your life. When we appreciate that, something happens on the inside of us. And as we move and and we get into this point in time, we got to have a mindset that appreciates even the little things. Because if you don't have an eye for the little things, you will never get to experience the big things. It is the little things in your life of where we we give God praise for and we appreciate and we care for and we sow into and we support. It's those little things in our life that when we're able to to really be trusted with those things, God's able to open up so much more. We look here in Mark chapter two, where it says a few days later when Jesus came back to Capernaum. I want you to understand. It says when Jesus came back to Capernaum, I want to read some more. A few days later, when Jesus came back to Capernaum, the news spread that he was home. Oh, man. He had to come back to Capernaum before news spread the way it did. See, we find Jesus in the temple and, and, and when he begins to talk and begins to teach and, and people just kind of give him a head tilt. They don't really they don't really swarm him like that. They don't really celebrate him in that way. They just like ain't this ain't this Joseph's boy. Ain't this the carpenter's son? Ain't, I don't really I don't really know. Why? Why is he important? That kind of deal. And, and they really don't appreciate or value him in that sense. But it's amazing that we get here in Mark 2, a few days later, when Jesus comes back to Capernaum, the news spread that he was home. Verse 2, and many people gathered together so that there was no room in the house, not even outside the door. This time when he comes back, he's been gone for a couple of days, but when he comes back, now everybody, the word is spreading that Jesus is here. Jesus is here. The one who does the miracles, the one who is this, the one who is that. But my question is, why couldn't we appreciate Jesus when he was here at first? Why we had to wait till he was gone and then appreciate him when he comes back? Why come we couldn't? How come we couldn't appreciate him? Because he was the same Jesus that was here before, the same Jesus that went away and the same Jesus that came back. However, they got a whole different attitude on his comeback than they had when he was there at first and he was with them and he was among them. But sometimes we got this whole FOMO aspect where it's the fear of missing out that we don't appreciate what we have until it's gone. That we don't appreciate the value that's right before us because it's right here. But when it begins to leave, then when it comes back, we got a whole new like, oh, he's here. He's here. And it's like, yeah, he been here. He been here. How come we haven't had this this focus on him when he's been here, but now that he's not here and he comes back, now we're all like, oh, he's here. Oh, man, some of us won't appreciate our spouse until they begin to not be here. Some people won't appreciate their kids until they not here. Some people won't appreciate their life until it's changed. Some people won't appreciate their legs until they can't walk as fast. Some people won't appreciate how God has blessed them financially until they don't got access no more. Some people won't appreciate their church until the door is closed. Some people won't appreciate their life until their life ain't like what it was. And it's like, oh, here it is. We Then how come we didn't appreciate it like that 
when it was here before. Sometimes God has blessed us abundantly, but we haven't laid the eyes of gratitude on it. And we haven't appreciated the way that we should appreciate it because it's regular to us. Jesus, the Bible says, the news spread that he was home. The Bible talks about that a prophet is not with honor except in his own home. And so at home, he was regular. Until there was a limited supply of Jesus and we got to catch him while he here, then there was appreciation for him. We got to make sure that we're not missing out on value around us because it's regular to us. It's regular. Oh, I get to see that every day, so it's not as valuable. Oh, I get to be with her every day, so it's not as valuable. Oh, I can call him anytime, so it's not as valuable. But the thing about it is when you don't appreciate something, when you don't value it, when you don't have that connection to it, to where you honor it, you will never get the same experience as someone else who honors it. You will never get the same experience from a house that if somebody who comes in who honors it versus a person who considers it regular. You will never get the same relationship from a teacher as someone who honors them or someone who consider them regular. You will never get the same experience with a boss or someone who is above you if you never honor them and you just consider them as regular. Same person, same moment, same place, same opportunity, but you see them as regular. What we're really saying is you're not ready. You are not ready. Somebody say ready. You're not ready to see what God has blessed you with in the way that he's blessed you because you are not ready to see it in that light. Because if you see it in that light, then you got the responsibility of responding and honoring it that way. Jesus was here. He was present. He was in their midst. He was in their city. He was in their place. But yet they weren't ready to receive him for who he was. Somebody say ready. What is sitting around you that you're not ready to receive it as what it is? You're not ready to receive that child the way he is. You're not ready to receive that marriage the way it is. You're not ready to see that level of of finance and influence the way it is. You're not ready for the opportunity to come your way. You're not ready for you to just come to terms with the fact that this is valuable. You're not ready to see yourself the way God sees you. You're not ready to accept the call that's on your life. You're not ready. It's already there. You walk by it every day. You see it on the inside of you. You know it's real. You know that he's called you to it. You know it's awesome. You know it's powerful, but you're not ready to see it because it don't look like the finished product. But you know inside that it's powerful. You know inside that it's great. You know there's something different about this Jesus. Even though he's the carpenter's son, you know there's something different about him, but you're not ready to see him. Don't wait till it's gone to be ready. Somebody say ready. And so a few days later, when Jesus came back to Capernaum, the news spread that he was home. And many people gathered together so that there was no room in the house, not even outside the door. It was in a house, y'all, in a house. And Jesus was teaching them God's message. They didn't gather when he was in the temple, but now that he's gone and he's back, they're ready to get to him, even if he in a house and they ain't even got no room in the house, not even outside the door. Verse three, and four people came carrying a paralyzed man. And since they could not get to Jesus because of the crowd, they dug a hole in the roof right above where he was speaking. Let's talk about this. That these four people carrying a paralyzed man heard the word that Jesus was delivering God's message and brought this paralyzed man to him. These four people were ready. 
Somebody say ready. They was ready because they were ready to see value in something that didn't look like it had value. They were ready to see value in a paralyzed man that other people may have walked past, but they were ready to see him the way God saw him. They were ready for him to get out of this situation that he was in. They were ready enough that they would sacrifice their current comfort in order to pick up a paralyzed man and take him to Jesus. They was ready for this moment to happen. I don't know if they was ready because they was tired of dealing with him, tired of him complaining. Whatever it takes for you to be ready, I'm ready for you to be ready. Sometimes situations will weigh on us enough to get us ready to want something different. Sometimes the comfort of life is the biggest part that's holding us back because we're comfortable and God will have to stir up things in our life to make us uncomfortable so that we will get ready, so that we will get ready to move on to the next thing in our life, so that we will get uncomfortable enough not to stay here. And so we will ready ourselves to move to the next part. So they were ready and they saw this man and they said, we need to take him to Jesus, especially while he's here. We've heard that he's back. So now let's get set. You see, set requires us to do something different. You can be ready, but when you get set, you put yourself in a position to go forward. When you set yourself, now your body is now responding to where your mind has been ready to go. When you get set, your body responds in track. They would be ready and we would be down in the blocks and we would be ready. We would be focused on winning a race. We would be focused on our, our on our rhythm. We would be focused on moving forward. We would be focused about that. But when we got set, now our body responds to where our mind was prepared to go. We are set. We are making the first step to move forward to where we are. Our mind is focused on. So when we get set in the spirit, yes, we have the faith to believe that this thing will happen. But when we get set, our body begins to respond. Other people begin to see our serious nature about this. They may have been talking about this before. They may have had conversations with the man and say, hey, look, we, we, you're not going to say like this no more. We are ready to see you outside of this. And guess what? We are set because we didn't lift you up off the ground and we move in. I want some people to have some set in their life, some set that says, even though the baby not here, I'm going to go ahead and get the room ready. I'm a, I want some set in your life that says, even though my kid doesn't look like they're going to be a college student, but I'm going to start building their college tuition fund. I need some set in their life that says, even though I don't know if I have the money to be able to put the down payment on it, I'm going to go walk around the neighborhood anyway. A set in their life that says, even though I don't even have a church yet, but yet I'm going to emerge myself in the word of God and I'm going to dig and dig deep and I'm going to get education in my life to understand the word more so that I will be set. And I'm ready for it. I I processed in my head that I'm capable, but I haven't set myself. I haven't had something outside of me. I haven't put my body and my resources towards what my mind is thinking. And so we got to get set. These four men are bringing this paralyzed man in. And they are set on the fact that they're going to get him to Jesus. The funny thing is when you set, ain't too much turning you around. At this point in time, when I'm set in a race, I have earned the right to be here. When I'm set in a race, my mind is focused. I ain't thinking on anything else. When I'm set in a race, ain't no turning back now. I'm just waiting for the opportunity and ain't nothing stopping me from getting to the finish line. Ain't nothing be next happening between me and the finish line. If it ain't the finish line, it's not what's happening next. If it's not the fact that I'm going to make it to what God has called me to, I'm not negotiating what God has spoken in our life. I'm moving forward to it. And the next thing that happens in my life is going to be what God said. I'm putting all my energy and focus to what he has called us to. And we are moving forward in that direction. And I'm not accepting. I'm not negotiating what God has promised. But I'm going to stand on his word. And I've set myself that way. And so here they are. And it says four people, verse three, four people came carrying a paralyzed man. And since they could not get to Jesus because of the crowd, here it goes. Because they couldn't get to Jesus because of the crowd, they dug a hole in the roof right above where he was speaking. They dug a hole in the roof. They were so set. They talk about when you got your mind set on something. 
<laughs> Ain't nothing going to stop you. They were set enough that they said we can't get through the door, but we're going to lift this thing up and we're going on the roof. Can you imagine trying to get this paralyzed man up here on the roof? Now, if I'm the paralyzed man, I'm like, y'all don't drop me. <laughs> I'm already dealing with enough. Y'all elevated me to a place and I ain't never been to before. It's out of my control. I'm at a height that I'm not comfortable with. And you guys are lifting me up here. Matter of fact, I don't even know if I want to be here. But the fact of the matter is down that we set ain't no turning back. You need some friends in your life that once you agree and you get set, that they will take you to places that may be uncomfortable for you. But once, your, once their mind is set, that you won't turn back. See, sometimes we go back to our comfort zone because we ain't got no friends around us that are set, that are moving with us that are causing us to move with our purpose and causing us to stay focused enough that we return back to our comfort zone. You got to have some crazy friends around you that will cause you to be elevated up to places that make you uncomfortable. But when you get up there, even when you want to turn back, they holding you up so much that you can't even go back. That sometimes some friends got to carry you to the next place. That sometimes some friends got to encourage you to the next level. Sometimes some friends got to take you to a place that they know that you need, even though you don't agree that you're supposed to be there. Sometimes some friends got to take you places that you can't get to by yourself. Sometimes some friends got to lift you up to a place that you would not normally go, but because they're your friends, they lift you up anyway. Somebody say set. They are set. And they come over. And not only do they get them up there, but then they dig a hole in the roof above where he is speaking. That's a mindset. That's a mindset. Ooh, a mindset. They had to get to a place in their mind where they were not accepting no as an answer. Now, the core of why they were not accepting no as an answer was because they were getting to Jesus. And sometimes our why behind why we are moving is not strong enough. So therefore, when obstacles come up, we say, oh, it must not was meant to be. But when we look at the fact that their whole plan was to get to Jesus, whether it was them or the paralyzed man, their whole motivation was to get to Jesus. Now, what happens when we get to Jesus? I don't know. But our whole action plan was get to Jesus. So therefore, any natural barriers that arise while I'm on my way to get to Jesus must kneel, must bow, must break because nothing will stand between. There is nothing that can separate me. There is nothing that will get in my way to help me get into Jesus. So anything that tries to stop what God has placed in my heart to do, I will take down and begin to speak to and do whatever I need to to get to Jesus. And some of us have to get to a place where we realize that that business ain't about the business. It's about people getting to Jesus. We need to realize that us speaking ain't about us speaking this, but it's about people getting to Jesus. We got to realize that that idea ain't just about the idea, but it's about people getting to Jesus. And when we realize that it's about people getting to Jesus, then we realize that nothing can stop us and any natural barrier that comes up, we will destroy that thing because nothing will stand between us and doing what Jesus has called us to do because we got to get these people to Jesus. COVID will not stop us from getting people to Jesus. This business deals will not stop us from getting people to Jesus. There is nothing that will cause us not to be able to bring people to Jesus. We will tear it down. We will adapt. We will move in a certain way. We will change the direction. We will change the side. We will do whatever we need to do to get people to Jesus and we will tear through the roof if required. So four people came carrying a paralyzed man and they dug a hole right above where he was speaking because they had a mind set to get to him. And so I want want to, to dig into this right here in the word, verse four, since they could not get to Jesus because of the crowd, they dug a hole in the roof right above where he was speaking. And when they got through, They lowered the mat with the paralyzed man on it. Verse five, when Jesus saw the faith of these people, he said to the paralyzed man, young man, your sins are forgiven. I want to go back up. It says when they got through, (laughs) when they got through, 
Let, let's look at that. When they got through, somebody say go. See, sometimes we get caught up in the battle so much that we forget why we are in the fight in the first place. See, we got to make sure that we understand that when we're going through round and round trying to build relationships, when we go through round and round trying to overcome financial obstacles, when we go round and round with buying equipment, when we go round and round with trying to build relationships, when we go round and round with all these troubles and, 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 and things that we're fighting and things that we're going through and how the enemy tries to throw stuff at us and barriers that come our way, sometimes we can get so caught up in the actual fight that we forget the why behind the fight, that this is not... The, the major thing, this is just something that's standing in the way of the major thing, is that here we are. Can you imagine them now with the paralyzed man over here? And here they are digging in the roof, trying to find something. I don't know if they got shovels. I don't know if they got hammers. I don't know if they found something on the roof. I don't know if they just kicking real hard. I don't know what they're doing trying to get through the roof. But I can imagine that there's a lot going on here. Here's a paralyzed man that's just laying to the side. He's probably like, man, we came this far. I don't even know if we're going to make it. Here they are trying to develop a plan. Somebody who saying like, look, all right, look, we're going to tear it through. Somebody who says, oh, look, I got a hammer over here. Somebody who's, I don't even know what's going on up there, but it's a lot of energy going through the barrier that the roof is there. So they're kicking and they're knocking and they're beating and they're getting through the roof. And, and I love the fact that Jesus is still teaching while all this is going on. He ain't even distracted. That's a whole nother point. And so here they are and they make it through the roof and they could stop and celebrate because they got through the roof. They could do a praise break because they got through the roof. They could be, oh, hallelujah, we got through the roof. And they could just be so off focus of the fact that the roof, getting through the roof was a blessing, but that was just a barrier. That was just a part of the journey. And we got to make sure that we don't get caught up on things that are temporal as if they're everlasting and understand that the finances are temporal, understanding that the argument is temporal, understand that the competition is temporal, but we are going into something, a moment that's causing us to have this roof open is because we have to get the paralyzed man to Jesus and they remember and they go. Somebody say go. Some people have been waiting for so long for the opportunity and they've been fighting so long for the opportunity that they thought fighting for the opportunity was actually the victory. And no, God is saying, once the door open, now go. Don't forget the whole reason that you came through this. And so it says when they got through, they lowered the man. When they got through, they realized the whole purpose for being here was the man back here, and they lowered him down on the mat. They say, yes, it is a victory that we got through the roof. But the whole reason that we were fighting, the whole reason that we up here, the whole reason that we carried him all this way, the whole reason that we're fighting to get this deal done. The whole reason that we're opening this business, the whole reason that I'm applying to get this job, the whole reason that I'm making sure that our relationship, our marriage relationship is strong, the whole reason that I'm doing, the whole reason I'm doing this is to get them to Jesus. And they lower the man down on the mat. And I love this. Verse five, when Jesus saw the faith of these people, when Jesus saw the faith of these people, sometimes we like to have faith conversations. We're like, I got this much faith because I'm believing God for this. Oh, I got this much faith because I'm believing God for this. I'm believing God for 10,000. I'm believing God for 100,000. I'm believing God for a million. I'm believing God for a house. I'm believing God for two houses. I'm believing. And it's like we have these conversations, but it lets me know that faith is visible. And I want to go a little deeper because sometimes it ain't about the house. It ain't about the cars. It ain't about all that kind of stuff that, you know, some people, that's all the faith talk they have, but there are some people who, who want the title. Call me pastor Billups, call me Bishop Billups, call me overseer, call me all that stuff. But really I don't need for you to, to, to label me by a title. I don't need for you to label me by what church I go to. I don't need for you to label me by any association. I want my faith to be visible. 
I want my faith to be so visible that even people who don't know what Christianity is, who don't know followers of Christ, who don't know believers, who don't know the body of Christ say, listen, I don't know what that is, but I want that. I, I don't I don't even know what that is. I, I Church, I don't know about church. I don't know about what. All I know is that whatever in your life is visible enough that I need it. That's the kind of life I want to live. I want to live a life to where Patrick is synonymous with the life that God designed for me to live. I want to live a life that Billups, the name Billups, presents a life that's followers after Christ. I want to live a life so much that just my presence is connected to a lifestyle with Christ. I want to live a life that is so intertwined that people say, I can see your faith. Even if you never preach, I can see faith in your life. I can see something different in your life. And many times we want and people to, to know us by our title rather than know us by our fruit. To say, whether you post on Facebook or not about the trip that you just took with your spouse, when I see y'all together, I know. I see your relationship. I see the fruit of what God is doing in your life. I see the love. I see the peace. I see the strength. I see the wisdom. Jesus looked at them and they never had to say anything to Jesus, but he says, I see your faith. Can we get to a point in our life to where people can see our faith? When Jesus saw the faith of these people, he said to the paralyzed man, Young man, reminds me of somebody in my life. A young man, <laughs> young man, your sins are forgiven. That's powerful, y'all. It's powerful because there was no space in the house. News spread that Jesus was coming. I've been in many conferences, been in many church services, many gatherings. And I know that when there's someone in high demand that's coming, that people show up two, three hours early in order to get a good seat, in order to be up front in order to possibly engage with that person who's in high demand so that they can see them, that maybe they'll get to raise their hand, that maybe they'll call them up, that maybe something will happen in the course of the time together. As if that's going to get Jesus' attention. What amazes me about this is that though they showed up, maybe they showed up on time. Maybe they even showed up 15 minutes early and people were showing up three hours early. I don't know. All I know is that it would seem that someone else had beat them to the place where Jesus would have done something like this. But Jesus doesn't measure us based on where we sit. Jesus doesn't connect with us based on how he connects with somebody else. Jesus does not base our, our grace and mercy off of what he gave to somebody else. Jesus, he is not concerned with the person who got there first. Matter of fact, the first shall be last and the last shall be first. He says, I see your faith. Matter of fact, I see your faith in me that you would go through all this to get to a place and you're going to tear off the roof while I'm speaking, might get in trouble by the homeowner. I don't even know, but you care about what I have to offer enough that you you will give your life to get close to me. And guess what? I see your faith. Not only do I see the faith of the parallel, I see the faith of the four friends who said, listen, I'm not going to leave my friend where he is. I'm going to take him to Jesus. Who in your life are you taking to Jesus? Who in your life are you putting your life on the line that they can get to where God has called them to? Who in your life are you putting your life on pause to make sure you're not leaving them behind? Where is the church at that will care for the lost? Where is 
the church that will care for the hurting? Where is the church that will care for the broken? I don't believe these four friends said, listen, hey, do you drink alcohol? Oh, yeah, no. You Okay, now you can go to Jesus. Now, I don't believe them friends said, hey, are you Democrat or Republican? Oh, oh, now we'll take you to Jesus. I don't believe those friends said, hey, do you do you like sports? No, you don't like sports? Oh, are you from the city? Are you from the country? No, them friends saw value. They were ready to see this man uh, free. They were ready to see this man running. They were ready to see this man up and said, listen, I don't care what you're dealing with, but there is enough value if God created you that I will take you to Jesus at all cost. Can we get like that for some folks in our life? Can we get like that for some folks in our life? Can we get like that for some folks who don't look like us? Can we get like that for some folks who don't think like us? Can we get like that for some folks who don't believe like us? Can we get like that for some folks who who struggle with different things that we don't approve of? Because we like to deal with people who sin like us. But can we can we go to some people who sin with things that make us itch and say, you deserve getting to Jesus, too? It got you paralyzed right now, but I'm going to take you to Jesus. Not because I'm trying to fix you. I'm taking you to Jesus because he fixed me. And whatever he wants to do with you is better than what you got right now. So I'm going to carry you to Jesus in love. I'm going to carry you to Jesus in, in, in passion and, and, and peace. I'm going to carry you to Jesus as best as I know how. I'm not carrying to Jesus so he can judge you in front of me. I'm carrying you to Jesus because he changed my life. And when I see you like this, I realize that Jesus is the answer. And what you guys hash out is between y'all. <laughs> the four friends still on the roof. Because what's happening between you and Jesus ain't none of my business. I wish somebody would get grown in here. What's happening between you and Jesus ain't got nothing to do with me. The four friends still on the roof. They said, our goal was to get you to Jesus. And now that you are there to Jesus, ain't made for us to be in this conversation. I don't need to translate for you and Jesus. I just need to get you to him. But some of us are too nosy the fact that we want to know and dictate everybody's next move in their life and say, you're supposed to live this way. You're supposed to do that and stop doing this and stop doing that. And stop doing that. Hey, what's between you and Jesus is between you and Jesus. I just want to bring him to you. I just want you to bring, we want to bring you to him. And what you guys talk about is what y'all talk about. What you guys hash out is what you guys hash out. What he says that you need to drop right now is what you need to drop right now. But it's my job to bring you to Jesus. I'm going to stay on the roof while y'all talk. But even though I'm on the roof, he says, I see your faith. And so we got to be ready to see things the way God calls us to see. We got to be set and have a mindset enough that when he calls us to move forward, that our body responds to where our mind is focused on the things above. And then we got to go. And as barriers and obstacles come up our way and we begin to fight and knock those things down and begin to run for board, to tear things down that are not like they're supposed to be and begin to speak life and begin to fight and be fatigued and, and have our ups and our downs that we don't forget to go with what God has told us to do when the door opens. Don't forget that this all is about people getting to Jesus. It's all about people getting to Jesus. The setup, the tear down, the going online, the logging in, the sharing the posts, the commenting, the reaching out to people, the making the phone calls, the, the, the making sure it's up, the fighting through technology, the coming to service, the fighting through the snow, the fighting through the rain, the talking to our neighbor, the dealing with this and dealing with that. It's all about people getting to Jesus. Let us not forget that there is a world paralyzed because there's things standing in the way between them and Jesus. And we gonna tear every barrier down. Ready, set, go. 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 I want to pray with you today. Father, we thank you and we bless your name. 
And we thank you for the word of God that has been spoken into our spirit today to be ready, to be set to where our body responds and go with the purpose and focus that God has given us. God, I thank you that there's some people on here right now that are ready to accept you. Grandma told them about, about you. They weren't ready. The preacher told them about him. They weren't ready. Today, they're ready to accept you. And I want to pray this prayer. If you can repeat this prayer after me and mean it from your heart. You will be set and move towards going towards God's purpose on your life and start in this journey. It's not the finish line. It's not like, a, oh, all is done ticket. It starts the journey towards the way Christ wants us to live. And I want you to repeat this prayer after me. Say, dear Jesus, come into my heart and save me. I believe that you died on the cross for my sin and I accept you into my heart. I renounce Satan, make my salvation real to me, and lead me by your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, we're going to say amen in a second. Lord, I thank you for those who are living a life where they are ready to launch in. They are set and that you're bringing resources from the north, south, east, and west, that you are covering them, giving them wisdom and understanding to move forward in peace, wisdom, and power. So Lord, we thank you for them. God, we thank you for those who need healing in their life. From the top of their head to the soles of their feet, strengthen them, build them up in the most holy face, that they may move forward and understand that you still do the same miracles that you did back then, today, and more. So Lord, we thank you. We call them healed, blessed, delivered, and whole. And Jesus name we pray. Amen. Can we bless God right there and give him a praise for he is mighty, for he is great, for he is awesome. And we just believe that God has done something amazing in your life. We believe that God is using you in a mighty way. We believe that you are ready, that you are set, and that you are going forward in God's purpose in the name of Jesus. And so we thank God for you. We ask that you would connect with us, text us, Rail Church to 54244 so that we can get connected and be able to communicate and send you different things throughout the week so that you can continue on this journey in a great way. God is doing amazing things, y'all. And I just believe that God wants to do even more as we move forward with a mindset of being ready to see things the way God sees it, to be set that when we see it, that we're able to put our body to it and put our resources and our actual action to it and that we will go. And even when hindrances come up and even when challenges go up, that we will go through those different things and remember why we were going when the door of opportunity opens. And so I believe that God is doing great things today. Look, I'm excited. Ready, set, go. Listen, if you want to sow into the ministry today, it is a great day to do so. Next Sunday, we're going to be going out and we're going to be going out into our community and blessing lives. You can do it right where you are as well. Listen, on the uh, giving aspect, when you get to the giving page, you can text to give and all that kind of stuff. But actually on the giving page, there's a day of change jar. If you drop money in the day of, day of change jar, that is actually the fund that we use to go out and bless people with gas cars, bless people at the uh, food line, bless people, unconditional love, no questions asked. We go out, interrupt their day with God's unconditional love and we sow into their life and there are so many testimonies. Little kids are going out here and blessing people and people are coming into tears because it is interrupting their day with love and we show love to those out there. It is the love of God that's going to change hearts and when we go out in the community, it interrupts people's day and they're like, whoa, why are you here? Why are you doing this? I don't need that. And it says everybody needs unconditional love. So we urge you to go on, give, so we're going to go out and bless our community, but you can do it as well, right where you are. Most of the time we get like a $10, $5, $20 gift card to a restaurant or to a food line or to a gas station. And then we just go on, put this uh, unconditional love thing on there that you can get off our website. And then we go out and we give it to them and we bless them and say, God loves you. And we want to be here today because he wanted us to show you unconditional love. And from there, you're led by the Spirit to talk and engage with Him. Because everybody needs unconditional love. And so we're excited. So into the ministry. We're looking forward. If you go do it, we want to see some pictures, send it our way, that kind of thing. We're excited for what God is doing. Listen, He is relevant. 
you are relevant. We are relevant. We are centered on God to clang his truth and live it in faith. God bless you. We love you and we will see you soon.